Two concerns have been widely reported in Minnesota lately. The achievement gap between students of color and white students and a growing teacher shortage. The Increased Teachers of Color Act is a comprehensive bill that seeks to address those concerns. Joining me in the studio is the author of the bill and the chair of the Senate E-12 Finance Committee, Senator Carla Nelson. Welcome. Good morning. The bill attempts to tackle these challenges from many fronts. I'd like to start with the Alternative Teacher Professional Pay System. What does that mean? That's uh, what's called the QComp, uh, and that is a program that allows for additional pay for additional things that teachers do uh, beyond the contract language. Some schools have opted into QComP, some have not. Uh, QComP has been expanded over the years to include things like paying for teacher evaluations. Uh, the bill that I have for expanding teachers of color actually expands QComP to allow for providing incentives for mentoring. Uh, so you can actually use QComP then to pay for some of the mentoring costs. When I was a teacher, we always, uh, new teachers were paired with uh, veteran teachers, and that's always a good thing, but there was never any time allowed in the schedule for that. Uh, and I'm hoping that this small step will encourage more mentorship uh, with our veteran teachers and our new teachers to try and specifically help with that. Uh, we have a rapid uh, teacher turnover, about 25% of our uh, new teachers do not stay in the profession. And I think part of it is it's, it's, teaching is kind of an unusual thing. We have teachers who leave after uh, 30 years of experience and um, tested and proven techniques, and when they retire, those skills go right out the door with the teacher. Whereas a lot of times in businesses, there's kind of this transition period. We don't really have that in the education system where we can take what was learned from that, that person who's retiring and share that with the new person coming in. Uh, I'm hoping mentoring allows us to do that in a small way. Uh, with our veteran teachers uh, being able to spend more time with our new teachers. So it's providing funding then that's going to create that pathway for mentorship to keep those new teachers and teachers of color in the teaching profession. That's the idea? Yes, exactly. Okay. Let's move also then to the how the bill encourages schools to develop introductory courses in education. Are these introductory courses in high school or in college or both? And what's the rationale for this? Oh, the, the answer is both. And this is called dual enrollment. It's been highly successful where high school students are taking college courses that are meet the high school standards and also provide college credit at the same time. It's called dual enrollment. We have things like post-secondary enrollment options, PSEO. We have concurrent enrollment. That's where the colleges uh, teach the high school teachers to uh, present the college curriculum right in the high school classroom. Um, and then we have IP and AB, which are other dual enrollment courses. They've proven highly successful for all students. Uh, the students graduate quicker. They graduate with higher GPAs and lower student debt. And the idea is to get these students thinking about the possibility of education as yes. a career path. And so this is building upon our existing uh, dual enrollment or concurrent enrollment. And we are seeking uh, higher education institutions to bring in those concurrent enrollment classes into the high schools that start students on the pathway of uh, teacher preparation. And so this would provide funding for school districts who would like to implement that? Yes, it okay. would. Uh, student loan indebtedness, as you know, is a growing problem, and there is a provision in this bill for student loan forgiveness. Is that just for the teachers of color? Is it for all teachers? How does that work? Um, so again, this bill is building on existing things that we have in place, like QComp and dual enrollment. And this is building on the teacher loan forgiveness for areas of teacher shortage. That's what our current law states. Um, I have expanded this to, for the shortage to include teachers of color. For in fact, in fact, we do have a shortage of teachers of color. So about 4% of our teachers are teachers of color, yet our student population is getting more diverse and growing very quickly. And so we're lagging in that area. And so this just expands the teacher shortage loan forgiveness program to include teachers of color. One committee testifier spoke recently about the, her community of paraprofessionals at the school that she works at, yes. um, that they're already 100% people of color. And one provision expands the Grow Your Own Pathways to assist in teacher licensure for teachers of color. Yes. How does this help more teachers get licensed? Oh, because uh, a number of our paraprofessionals, we do have a more diverse paraprofessional population than we do teacher 
of, of our teachers. And so this is, is the Grow Your Own program. Some of our universities, like St. Mary's University, Winona State University, are already doing this, where they are uh, taking um, paraprofessionals who are interested and also then kind of melding those classes around uh, maybe like in a cohort uh, a type schedule where they can be paraprofessionals and also work towards their full teaching uh, degree and certificate. We do that as teachers. When I was teaching, uh, I was teaching full time, but I also went back to the University of Minnesota to get my master's degree and worked through a cohort that was designed for class time around when we were not in the classroom. And it's a model like that that can be very helpful for our paraprofessionals, and that is the grow your own model. One last question. Despite the projected budget surplus, um, this bill will cost additional dollars. And you are also in support of Governor Dayton's education budget request, which is for an additional $371 million over the next biennium. Can the state afford these additional funds for education when there are so many other demands for health and human services and infrastructure and things like that? It, there truly are way more demands than there are resources. And the governor's budget actually seeks $609 million over the base appropriations, so it would be over $18 billion. Of that, $371 million is for this, I think it's the, the price of entry, it's the thing that we absolutely must do. And that is we must increase the per pupil funding formula by 2% each year of the biennium. That is the bread and butter of education funding. Uh, certainly the expenses for our school districts are going up by nearly 3% it would cost on the formula to meet those expenses. Uh, and I think we just cannot afford to wait. Uh, it's our future depends on it. We, have, uh, we still have the stubborn achievement gap, the worst in the nation. We cannot afford that. Uh, we have a very uh, strong workforce shortage. We have almost a crisis in not having workers. Uh, and so that is why we cannot afford uh, to not do the 2% each year on the formula. It's the thing that our school districts are asking for. It treats every school district the same, every student the same regarding funding, no matter where their zip code is, and it provides school districts the greatest flexibility to use the funding to best meet the needs of students in their district. So I think it's the best way to go. Senator Nelson, I hope to have you back for more in education. I want to thank you for your time today. Thank you. Very great to be here.